Uh, my name is Steve Brody. I'm the Chief Products and Marketing Officer here at SkyTap. Awesome. And we're going to get a little look through... Uh... Get a little look at this. I think Aaron showed you a little bit uh, the demo through the iPhone. We'll show it to you through a more traditional browser here and how the product works. So. Cool. And it lets me virtualize a whole bunch of uh, machines so that I can do testing on very different OSs like Windows or Linux. Right. Yeah, it's basically a cloud computing solution. So on demand, you can spin up a virtual lab. So you can do, do quality it. assurance. Uh, you can do demos. You can do training. So again, all you need is a browser here. In this particular case, we are using uh, Firefox. Go ahead and uh, log in here. And this is great. It's designed to be used uh, basically uh, you know, wherever you are around the world. So we have a number of our customers where they have development here in the US. They may have testing uh, somewhere overseas. So the first thing you'll come into is what we call our dashboard screen. Yeah. And this is a portal into our solution. So it shows you some uh, frequently used items. And we are a utility-based uh, solution, so we also show you how much you're using. We basically charge based on how much storage you use and how many virtual machine cores you have. Yeah. Now, let me jump in. If you were a user and you were brand new to the system, uh, the first place that you'd probably come to is our library. And I'll talk a little bit about this. First of all, we allow customers, a lot of times people have virtual machine images. They've already set up some virtual machine images for testing. Yeah. And so you can import those into our environment. So you've got it all already built up. You send it to us, and you can run it in our hardware. Okay. So many so what kinds of the images can you deal with, like stuff you've done for VMware or Parallels? Or yeah, so internally what we run on is we run on VMware ESX okay. and on Citrix Zen. Okay. And uh, so we can take in those images and we can run it in our environment. And through some of the conversion tools, we can convert many other formats and additions and run that in our environment. Okay. So that's a very common scenario for people to upgrade. You know, a big percentage of our customers are actually using virtualization. Now, if you're not, you know, what we have is, first of all, we have a public library. So in this public library, we've built uh, a set of virtual machine appliances that you can use as starting points. So Aaron showed you Vista, for example, but we have uh, other items in here as well. So yeah. you have XP and Windows Server and yeah, Linux pretty much everything like in here. So if you want to, you know, spin up a CentOS box, if you want to spin up an Ubuntu box, you have those opportunities. And we have higher level software in here as well. So if you want to have uh, SharePoint, for example, I believe we've got SharePoint in here. I uh, don't have that in here right now in this version, but you know, SQL Server, we've got some SQL Server stacks in here. So I can quickly come in here. I can click on a machine. It gives me a little bit of information on that machine. Uh, I can click Install in Lab. And as you've seen before, I can come in here. Uh, basically, I can change some of the network settings. I can accept the default IP address, uh, the host name, the MAC address. Uh, I can accept the defaults, or I can change those. Many times in a testing scenario, you have specific IP addresses and host names that you want. So it's very important uh, to be able to set those. I can accept the defaults here. Uh, I can add more machines from my library. So I can come in here and I can put another XP Pro box uh, into this configuration. And gradually what I'm doing is I'm building up machines in my lab. So basically adding machines with pre-built operating systems on it. And then I can hit run. And once I hit run, it spins up those virtual machines. It's provisioning a virtual LAN with those IP addresses and provisioning all the storage for those environments. Now this is interesting. So if I'm an architect and I'm trying to build a new uh, web platform, I want I might want to to test it out on a 20 machine network. Yep. And I don't want to buy those machines, right? I, Absolutely. I just want to rent, basically, I'm renting these machines from you, and I don't want to set them up because they take an hour and a half just to install the OS on. Right. But I might want to build a whole data center yep. virtually, right? And Absolutely. Can I lay an application over 10 or 20 machines and test that? Absolutely. So Interesting. one of the other things, so we've set up the base machines here, and these are base operating, you know, more infrastructure software. It's base operating systems, browsers, uh, databases. If you have custom software, we have what we call assets. So in assets, you can upload your own builds. So if you have a nightly build cycle, you can upload your installers on a nightly basis. You can upload uh, ISOs of your own uh, software or you know, other software that you use, and you can then install it on top of that environment. 
Okay. Once you've installed the software on top of that environment, I'll go back to the lab. And uh, as you can see in my lab, I can actually run multiple labs in parallel. Each one of these is IP fenced, isolated environment. So I'm going to show it in tile view here. This is the environment that we spun up. But you can also see in my lab, I've got another area here where I've got a MySQL uh, machine running. I've got a CentOS box. I've got another environment running down here that has you know, six machines running in it. These are all fully isolated. They could have the same IP addresses, don't conflict. But in here, I could install the software. Once I get it the way that I want it, I can actually snapshot this. Um, I'll suspend it, and it'll take down. So let's assume I've installed all my software. I've uploaded, I've installed it. I can snapshot it. I put it back into the library, and I can say this is gold build 456. Yeah. This is my gold infrastructure. From that point on, when I get my nightly builds or whatever, I can install on top of that, persist that to the private library. And then it becomes a build that everyone can go in and test on top of. Wow. So it really saves a lot of time. And for many environments, if you're a QA organization, you're often constrained by machines. Yeah. You hit the end of the release cycle, you have to do all this compatibility testing. Product manager comes in and says, test on Windows 2008 64-bit. Well, where do I get the CDs? Where do I get the machines? I'm at the end of a release cycle. Here you can very quickly provision that on demand. So it's great for that. It's great for training environments. Is, if, if you're building a, a test data center, is this good for testing like if a machine goes down, can you take a machine down and see if your system survives? Absolutely. For resiliency, you could come in and you know you have a multi-machine environment. You could test what happens. So if this one machine comes down, I could go ahead and suspend that and see how the application behaves. Uh, that's interesting. So some customers use this. I mean, if you want to do load testing in your environment, see how it scales. Like you mentioned, you don't have enough machines in place. You can spin it up here virtually. People do IT prototyping. You want to see what happens if you upgrade to the next version of the database in your environment. So IT people will use it for testing in those scenarios as well. Very, very cool. So one other one that I'll show you is if we go back into the lab, uh, one of the scenarios I have running here is a multi-machine environment. This has six machines in this case. And what it simulates is a browser compatibility test. Yeah. So what I have running here is uh, a Selenium controller. And I've got an application here that has an application server, and it's got a database. And then I'm testing several clients. I've got Ubuntu running a browser. I've got XP with Firefox. I've got Vista with IE. So what I can do is I bring up this controller, and all these machines are networked. So when I bring this up, one of the things that uh, we have is a console capability. And you can actually drill in. And where did that go? There we go. And you're actually in the machine. So basically, the user interface, you've brought it up. You know, Unlike Amazon, you get sort of raw web services, and it's more of a developer level. This is something that has a self-service UI that's really optimized for QA folks and, and, I, and training folks. And I can go to any of these windows and, and pull them down. And everything works. I mean, by default, these things have access out to the internet. And you can interact with everything they're networked together. You can also expose these out on the internet. So let's say you want to do an acceptance test. Uh, you can publish these things externally, and you can hit it with RDP or someone. You can publish a beta website, and people can come in and hit it, and it's actually running in our environment. This is really great. But in this case, you know, I've got this test case running, uh, yeah. and what it does, I can go ahead and click and run this. So you asked about automation. We don't replace automation tools. You can run any automation tool that you want to here. What this does is it remotely connects to all those machines and does browser, browser compatibility testing. So it's going to go to the Firefox machine, run through a set of scripts, the XP IE6 machine. And if we go to those machines, if I go over here to uh, which one, the XP, um, I think it's running through the Selenium tests on that environment. Wow. Now, let's say that I'm running through here and I run into a bug. So let's say I'm the QA tester and I run into a bug. One of the things I can do is I can actually take this session link here. And let's say my developer is working. It's in the same time zone. I can send this link or IM it to the developer. He can click on that link. And it live, he comes right into the session, effectively like a WebEx, and can come over my shoulder, take control, and start diagnosing what the issue is. There's this tricky you know, bug that we've found. And that's why it's more collaborative to work exactly. with like a, a development team in India this way, because you could both be w working on a, a machine. And the see same environment, like right. And a lot of times we hear developers uh, or, or testers tell us you know, they run into these ornery bugs. The developer may not be on site. They say, well, just keep the machine in that state and wait till I come in. Well, that's, meanwhile, that's blocking the test. All those machines are locked up. Yeah. The other thing that you can do, if the developer's not in the same time zone, you can go out 
And let's say you run into that same bug. I can snapshot this. I'll go ahead and suspend it first. Yeah. I suspend it. So when the bug occurred, it's capturing all the state of that environment, exactly when the bug happened. Then I can snapshot it. I put it into the library. I can go to my defect tracking system, and I can take a URL to this config, put it in the defect tracking system. Next day, developer comes in, sees the report, here's the reproduction steps, clicks on this, spins it up exactly in the state that now, it was. Now, is there any cost for me to do this? You know, to do a bunch of saves of these OS states, or is it just a flat fee for yeah. me to have the six machines? Right. So built into our subscriptions, we give you access to the software, and it provides a certain amount of storage and peak number of VMs. So every time you persist one of these, there is some storage that is happening under the covers. So it's basically dependent on how much storage you have in your subscription. Got it. But uh, the subscription feature is so powerful, and it saves you so much time in terms of defect reproduction and resolution yeah. that many organizations find you know they don't realize how they got away without it before well, they had I, it. I totally see the power of this. So, wow. So that's uh, a quick run through. You know, we have other capabilities. It has full user access control. I can set up projects. I can set up users with different access rights. Yeah. So I can have my outsourcing team. They can only access a certain application and a certain build, and they can't touch anything else in the environment. And it has full audit trail capability. So if I'm the administrator, I can go through and do auditing, and I can see what Aaron did uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, in the environment. That's, that's why we fired him. Yeah, that's why he's fired. So I can go in here and see what kind of activity was going on and so forth. <laughs> he was doing inappropriate activity yeah. on, our, on our servers. Aaron, Aaron, doing that again. So that, in short, is what you can do. I mean, just very quickly, you can spin up machines as you need them. And it's great for QA. It's great for training. We're seeing a lot of customers. We didn't really go to market initially with training, but training organizations they don't know how many students they're going to have. They've got a multi-machine environment. You're doing like a big messaging infrastructure. It's very complex to set up. People are looking at more well, remote for training. For schools too, I mean, this gives, yeah. you, it gives you know, a, a teacher the ability to build a bunch of SQL Server machines and, and yeah. all play with them and destroy yeah. them. And yeah, hey, universities, uh, research labs. You know, a lot of research labs we're talking to. You know, they don't want to administer and maintain uh, an environment. And they just want to quickly go in and prototype something. Just give me a machine on demand. So very cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so this much, Robert. Is, uh, really enjoyed really, having you. Really neat. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, who are you? Well, my name is Aaron Bredhorst, and I'm the program manager for all of SkyTap Virtual Lab. I'm the guy who's responsible for the overall UI design, for managing feature development, for managing what features are going to go into our upcoming releases, and giving kind of crazy demos on the iPhone, actually, of our product. Now, wh why are you showing me it on the iPhone? So one of the really cool things about the fact that SkyTap Virtual Lab is entirely hosted with, within a web browser, that it's all web-based, is that you don't really need to be on you know, a Mac or a Windows machine or a Linux box or whatever in order to use it. You can actually use it from an iPhone. You could use it from even like a Windows mobile device if you really wanted to. If you really wanted if to. If you really wanted to. <laughs> or a Nokia, or you know, whatever works. Hey, I got a Nokia. Here. I know you have two of them, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. See. Yeah, yeah, totally. But I'd rather have the iPhone because yeah. you get double the screen <laughs> so. And, and so anyways, I just wanted so to So what does it look like? What does it do? So what SkyTab Virtual Lab lets you do is easily build up uh, running configurations of virtual machines and then quickly tear them down. And what I wanted to demonstrate for you was that we can get a brand new installation of Windows Vista up and running within 60 seconds from my cell phone. In fact, one of our ops guys uh, swears by his iPhone for managing certain operations within our product, okay. which is really cool. Sometimes when he needs to do administrative work, he'll just he'll log in through his iPhone and start poking away at it, which is really neat. All right, so, so let, let's see this happen. So here you go. Here's Virtual Lab. And we're going to go ahead and we'll click on our library. And in, like I said, since it's all HTML, we can just dive in here. Right. and interact with just about any part of the site that we'd be able to otherwise. And you have a bunch of choices yeah. of different kinds of Windows or Linux or Mac yeah. or whatever. So this is our library, mm -hmm. and we can browse through all well, of Well, there's the not Mac images there. No, unfortunately yeah. not yet. We'd love to, but we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. So we have you know, all these different virtual machines that you can interact with. All right. And in this case, I've chosen Windows Vista. Cool. So here we are. Here's a configuration with Windows Vista inside of it. Yeah. And we'll scroll down a little bit more, and we'll choose Install and Lab. OK. And what's happening right now is that uh, somewhere up in the cloud, a, uh, a machine with Windows Vista is being prepped and plugged into our servers and is now being spun up. So somewhere, doesn't really matter where, a Windows Vista machine is now booting up. And in just a couple of seconds, we'll have a brand new Windows Vista machine with a single CPU and a gig of RAM. We can modify those however we wanted to, and we can just have it up and running. 
How do you know when the machine's ready to use? So right now it tells you that it's resuming, and you have a nice little spinny guy there. Right, so that, the resuming yep, it right tells you. Yeah. And in just a couple of seconds, it will finish booting. Unfortunately for us, we can't you know go all the way in and actually interact with Windows because there's no Java support on here. Yep, you see it's running now. And so I can't say, for example, pull up like the virtual machine itself and interact with the desktop. And but even so, you can see. Oops, unfortunately, we're not going to get any more than that. Yeah. But so, yeah. So to actually use the machine, mm -hmm. you need a, a Java client. Now, yeah. uh, my Nokia has a Java client on it. Does it work? The Java client's not good enough to support. You know, I, it might. I have no idea. I've never tried it before. Okay. <laughs> if you wanted to be really brave, we could do that later on. I'd be happy to, happy <laughs> oh, to try it out and see if it works. But I just wanted to give you a quick demo that you can, you can interact with uh, SkyTab Virtual Lab on virtually any platform out there. Now, if I had some automatic test tools running on that uh, mm -hmm. install, could I see reports to make sure that the machine's still running properly? Yeah. And yeah, in theory, you should be able to get access to all of that. Okay. In fact, you have full access to, assuming you're an administrator on Virtual Lab, you have full access to the, the admin functionality on here. Okay. You can browse through all of your running configurations. You can see what's happening with those. So if we if we f find mm -hmm. out you're getting fired, we can use our iPhone to remove totally. you from the uh, permissions. Yeah, list within a matter of seconds. <laughs> from the going away party at the bar, no less. <laughs> Look cool. Yeah, and here, check that out. So you can see right here, I'm in the admin interface. Yeah. Right now, we have Windows Vista. I'm the owner. We just spun this guy up. There's a single virtual machine in there. And let's say I did indeed get fired, and we want to just kill that. Oopsies. Let's go ahead and kill that if we can. There we go. Uh, and yes, I'm very, very sure that I want to delete this. I don't want to consume any more valuable CPU resources. Yeah. And it's gone. That's it. That's I have cool. created, spun up, booted, and deleted a uh, Windows Vista machine in just a couple of minutes. Very cool. Yeah, it's well, very Thank slick. you very much. Thank you. Always a pleasure.